Today I'm going to be giving you a detailed guide on how to replace your spark plugs on your BMW. It is the 2.0 engine with the twin turbo. It is directed toward any do-it-yourselfers who want to save some money. You would expect to pay about $500 before tax having this done at the dealership. Within this guide, I'm going to be sharing the tools you'll need, the parts you'll need, and I will show you exactly how to unclip and unsecure some of the fasteners so that you don't break them. A lot of people show you taking this cover off, but they don't direct you on exactly how to take it off, so they end up breaking some of the plastic clips. So I'm gonna show you step-by-step step everything you need to do. Here are a few things you'll need or want to consider before tackling this job. Uh, these three tools right here are absolutely required. Um, you'll need a special socket. It is a 14 millimeter thin walled spark plug socket, uh, specific for BMWs. Has a bunch of little dimples in there, so you can't go to the store and just buy a 14 millimeter socket. You will need an extension. Recommend probably at least a four inch extension. This here is a six, and then a ratchet. So these three things are absolutely required. Uh, in addition to that, I use an impact. I have a 10 millimeter socket here for disconnecting the battery. I use anti-seize on the spark plugs to keep them from locking in the cylinders. I use dielectric grease on the coils. And then I have a torque wrench. The torque specifications for these spark plugs on this block are 18 foot pounds. So hopefully this is helpful. Uh, I will have links for some of these products down below using my Amazon Affiliates account. So f please feel free to check them out. They will be some of the best prices you will find around. And thank you very much. Hope you enjoy. So the first thing you'll want to do, especially if you're new to this kind of process, is you'll want to disconnect your battery. So I'll show you how to do that. In many cases, um, I could definitely do this job without disconnecting the battery or having any issues. But if you're not 100% sure what you're getting into, then go ahead and disconnect it just to be safe. First step to disconnecting your battery is you'll want to come to the trunk here and you'll want to remove these two fasteners here. There are two of them and they are 10 millimeter. Removed, this panel here will lift straight up and then you'll have access to disconnect your ground here. So I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect this. It is also a 10 millimeter. Now we are ready to remove this plenum here. In order to do that, there are two hoses here that you have to disconnect. There is like a textured spot on each side of the hose. You'll want to push in on each side, push the fitting forward and then pull it out and it'll disconnect. It's very similar to some of the fuel fittings where they have like a fastener on each side. Same thing for the other one. You'll push in and then pull out and it'll disconnect. This tab right here, right here, is what you are pushing in on. So you push in on it, let's see if we can show you here. You can see the fittings going in and then you'll move the fitting toward the front of the motor and then pull out. Once you have these two hoses disconnected, you can lift up on this, it should snap up and then you're gonna pull it toward the front of the vehicle. There's gonna be a couple things attached to the plenum. Move it slowly so you don't break anything. Now that you have the plenum out of the way, you'll want to come over here. Each one of these here, you can see they have the same shape and everything. Those are your coils. So they're going all the way down. What you'll do is you'll put your fingers under each side here and you'll pull up on it. It should click. And as it's pulling up, it is disconnecting this harness here. So you can move that out of the way. And then with a little bit of twisting, you can pull this right out of place. And you'll want to do that for all four of those. As I'm removing these, I'm going to take note of which one I'm pulling them out of because I'm going to line them up so that I put them all back in the same hole. They are the same part for each one, so it shouldn't matter, but I just would like to put it back how it was. All right, so I'm gonna compare the regular spark plug that is normally just a regular 5 8 that takes 5 8 socket, it's a standard, to what we are putting in our BMW. You can see it has all these ribs along it. So there's no way a regular socket for your standard 
spark plug is going to work. So you can see here on the end of this spark plug, looks pretty special, has a lot of grooves and dimples in it. And that goes nice and firm in there. So in many cases, you can use just your standard socket wrench. I have my fitting on here and I'm gonna use my impact. So here are the plugs. This is the one I pulled out and here are our new ones. Um, I recommend when installing your new plugs, I would add a little bit of anti-seize on the threads here so you could add it. I'll show you what the container looks like. There it is there. And then you just smear it in. Basically what this will do is it'll keep this from seizing into that hole uh, in the future if the engine gets too hot or anything like that. Okay, so I have all of my spark plugs ready to be installed. I have a little bit of anti-seize on each one of the threads here. So when starting these, you always want to start them by hand to make sure you don't cross the threads or anything like that. So I have my anti-seize on there. I'm going to drop it in the hole here. The magnet on this socket is very nice. It feels very secure. So there we have that one. For those of you that would like to save a few dollars, um, it does appear that this socket is not necessary for the four cylinder motor. Uh, I purchased this one and the straight socket because I also have the 4.4 liter V8. So this is probably a must for that vehicle. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and install the other three spark plugs in the same manner that I put the first one and then we'll go ahead and torque them down. may be comfortable tightening these without a torque wrench which is completely fine uh, if you do use a torque wrench the torque specifications for this engine is 18 foot pounds per spark plug so you may notice that some spark plug wire sets uh, will come with the clear grease that grease is called dielectric grease uh, and it is supposed to go on the end of your spark plug wire uh, I'm going to go ahead and put it on the end of these coils before plugging it in and it will help increase a better connection. We live in Washington State. There's a lot of rain and moisture here constantly. So um, I like to put dielectric grease on a lot of the fittings and ensure that the connection will be better and won't be compromised with any kind of moisture. So I'm gonna take the coil, I'm gonna place it in the hole, making sure that the, the electrical connection is facing toward where the connection needs to meet it. We'll push it down in there securely as you push this fitting in, this will start to come down and there we have it. So you should not have to force anything here. This fitting will be completely straight. I'll show you one more time. When you push this in, it's gonna automatically pull this down and then you can just secure it that way. Now you will want to follow that same process for each one of your cylinders. have it we have our coils installed I'm gonna show you a trick here I did find that it was easiest to slide this connector in place before pushing down and then as you push it in it'll push it'll pull that down again and then there you have it so so if you care about the dust and stuff now's a great time to wipe everything down which I'm gonna go ahead and do and then I will reinstall the plenum Well, I hope this video has been helpful. We are now going to reinstall the plenum here. I'm going to insert these back tabs here before I do anything. And then once those are inserted, I'll come around here and plug in both of my vacuum lines. 
they should just snap on. You'll hear a little click. And then the hoses up top here have little fittings that just poke right into the holes. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I hope this video has proven to be helpful. Should have saved you about $500. Um, I'm going to go ahead and fire it up and make sure everything's functioning properly. And please feel free to like and subscribe for future videos. Uh, my wife and I have this vehicle here. And then we also have the Alpina B7 4.4 liter uh, 750 i. So uh, please feel free to like and subscribe and stay tuned for future videos. Thank you very much for watching.